Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to start looking at example A. And what we want to do is we want to investigate the intersection of a line with these parametric equations. So these are the parametrics for the line. There's this one. There's this one. There's this one. Okay? So those are the parametrics for the line. So maybe we want to organize our work here a little bit. We're going to say the line is given by x equals 1 plus 2t, y is given by negative 6 plus 3t, and z is going to be given by negative 5 plus 2t. If I want, I can pull off the direction vector from there. The direction vector for this line is going to be 2, 3, 2. And I can also pull off the point if that's going to be useful. Oh, I'm just going to sort of adjust this a little bit. And the point is actually going to be 1, negative 6, negative 5. Now for your plane. Your plane, they give you the scalar equation. Which means that we can figure out it's normal pretty easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which one of these cases I might be dealing with by investigating the normals and the direction vector. So I'm going to take the normal and I'm going to dot it with the direction vector of the line. And that's going to be 4, negative 2, 1, the normal of the plane, dot 2, 3, 2. Now be careful, don't be um, doing the dot product with a point. Make sure you're doing it with the direction vector. This is going to be 8, negative 6, plus 2. And so that is not equal to 0. Yeah, there's no way that equals 0. That's going to be 4. It doesn't matter that it's 4. don't care that it's 4. What I care about is that it's not 0. So I'm going to stop there. Um, therefore, that means something. Therefore, the plane and the line are not parallel. Okay, So if the plane and the line are not parallel, and um, that means that it can't be this situation, it also means that the line and the plane can't be coincident, the line can't be lying in the plane, which also would be them being parallel. So if we really want to be specific, we could say that the plane and the line are not parallel and distinct, which is this position, and we can say that the line does not lie in the plane. But if we agree that saying that the line and the plane are not parallel can represent one of those two, then I'm good with that. So what that does mean though, if they're not parallel, then it's not this and it's not this, then the line must intersect intersect with the plane exactly once. And we'll call that the point of intersection. Okay, bring that up a little bit. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay. Um, good. So we know that this is the case. Now it says investigate the intersection. And when it says that, it also wants you to find the intersection if one exists. And in this case, it's asking you for the point of intersection. So we know that a point of intersection exists. They're asking us now to find it. A couple of ways you can do that. Now I want you to think through this. It's a scalar equation. I could find out three points on this plane by finding an x, a y, and a z that would satisfy this equation equaling zero. Get those three points, and then I could create, make sure that they're non-collinear, and then create two non-collinear direction vectors, and then put in the point, at one of the points that you had come up with, and come up with parametric equations. I could then take those parametric equations, set them equal to these parametric equations, and do elimination and solve. Certainly could do that. That would take an awful long time. Instead, what if we realize that any value of x, y, or z that goes in here that satisfies this equaling zero will actually be a point. And what we have over here is a list of all the x values on the line, all the y values on the line, and all the z values on the line in terms of a parametric, in terms of a parameter, this t value. So what that means is 
that if I take the scalar equation and if I sub in all the possible x values that are on the line and I sub in all the possible y values that are on the line and I sub in all the possible z values that are on the line and any value of t that satisfies this equation will be the specific parametric that I need here to come up with my point of intersection between the two of them. So again, this represents all the values of x that are on the, if those are all your x's, those are all your y's, those are all your z's, and it's also going to satisfy the parametric of, the, not the parametric, the scalar equation of the plane. So solving for this is going to be 4 plus 2t plus 12, negative 6t, minus 5, plus 2t, minus 19, equals 0. So let's see. Let's do the t's first. So it's 2t, subtract 6t is negative 4t, negative 2t. And then I've got 4 plus 12 is 16. Take away 5 is 11. 11 take away 19 is negative 8. Um, hold on, let's check that again. So I've got 4 plus 12 equals minus 5, yes. Minus 19 is negative 8. Let me check my t's. So this should be 12, negative 6, okay. So that's going to be negative 8 equals 0. Negative 2t equals negative 8. Oh, it's going to move over to the other side, so it's positive, so this will t equals negative 4. Now I'm just sort of stopping and looking at this because I think this is a different value than I came up with um, one of the classes that I was working with, so I just want to make sure that it's right. So it's going to be 4, 1 plus 2t, making sure that's right, and then it's negative 2, negative 6 plus 3t, and then it's just going to be negative 5 plus 2t, Negative 19 equals 0, 4, ah, uh ah, -uh. there's my mistake. That's an 8. So it's going to be 4 plus 8t, 12, negative 6, negative 5. So let's see, it's going to be 8t minus 6t is 2t, so I'm actually going to get 4t here. And that's still going to be negative 8. That's going to be positive 4. That's going to be a 2, and it's positive Okay, so t equals 2. My mistake, my distributive property didn't work out so well. So t equals 2, and what that means is that this is the single value of t that will take me to the point of intersection between this line and this plane. So the point of intersection is going to be x equals 1 plus 2 times 2 is 5. y is going to be negative 6 plus 3 times 2 is 0. And z is going to be negative 5 plus 2 times 2, which is negative 1. So the point of intersection is given by 5, 0, negative 1. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for that one. I'll come back with example B.